people are selling and taking profits. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, people are selling and taking profits because they're scared. And I totally understand why. So there's a lot of stocks that we're gonna talk about today that are in profit zones. And I think unless you're in something that has a huge catalyst coming, you really need to sit with yourself and say, is this a, like a politically or economic time for me to be holding this or staying in this? So I think it's important we have these conversations. We've seen the US 30 now peak, 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 and it's not able to break above these levels. And clearly it's Powell and Biden causing all this drama, but it can't break above these levels. And that's a problem. I don't see any catalyst to bring it over 34 right now because it's about to get heavy. So I really think that we're gonna have a hard correction on the US 30 and many stocks that are in it. What do you think? I agree. I think that the stock market has proven that every time we get to these levels, it sells off. It hasn't mm -hmm. been able to hold these levels uh, really for a long time. Yes. So I have literally no confidence that we're going to be able to hold these levels because, I mean, like you said, look look at the chart. I, charts don't lie, but people do. What exactly. would take our market above that in the summertime? I just don't see it. No. Um, unless Bitcoin maybe. Uh, or AI takes another huge move up. I just think that this is probably a great place to start selling and exactly. taking profits. And I'm glad uh, you said AI. Yeah, I mean, I mean, those are the things that, that are that's moving. Where the, the Russell 2000 comes in. Those are the things that are moving the market this year: AI, tech, and Bitcoin. Those are that's the things it. that are moving the market. So, unless we have another huge move in Bitcoin, AI, or tech, I just don't see it necessarily going much higher from here. I might be okay. wrong. But typically in the summertime, this is a pretty slow time in the market. It's not mm -hmm. a busy time in the market. And the market's doing extremely well. Exactly. So you have to really ask yourself, who's the one doing the buying, right? Who's buying this is what I wonder. in the middle of the summer? It has to be institutions. Yes. Has to be institutions. Because retail investors are on vacation. They're going to the beach. I talk to a lot of friends. They're not even thinking about stocks. I'm like, you guys are missing this huge move in the market. Oh, yeah, I'm on vacation. I'm at the beach. You know, oh, Bitcoin's at 30,000. Yo, it's too expensive. I can't buy any Bitcoin. Oh, my God. This is what I hear from people, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's too expensive. But why didn't you buy it when it was at 1,000 when I first started talking about it in 2017? Oh, it was too expensive then. <laughs> now it's 30,000 US. It's not too expensive now. Maybe oh, you no, should leave the beach now. and go work. So you have to ask yourself, who's really making these markets move? Anyone who's trying to say it's retail is, is, is dreaming. This is not retail that's moving these markets. This is institutions. Exactly. So that's why I think we can't be trashing institutions because they are giving us the hype we wanted. Everyone who was trashing institutions were surely celebrating today, weren't they? They were. And I watched them. I watched them all hype in this morning. Like watching the volume on the stocks this morning was mind boggling. Like I know we saw like Bitcoin miners were having like 10% alerts, 10% alerts right from market open this morning. And they pulled back just as quick as they went up. And now they're hovering because people are like, ah, what's happening? But this is a time we're going to set targets. So Russell 2000, when we're talking about AI, most of the AI are small caps, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, most companies- well, Aside from caps. the ones who say I'm AI, like Apple and Tesla and blah, blah, blah. But the actual companies, smaller ones that have been popping up and making people some really nice returns are small caps, aside from like C3 and whatnot, but quite a few of them. And it seems to me like the Russell 2000 has had a really nice peak. So this is where the retail markets move. And I think the, real, the retail markets move the small caps quite a bit. Yes. Um, but today, AI has been pulling back over two days. And that's fine because it does that. It pulls back, it hits its target levels, and then it goes when the heck it wants to. We can't predict it. You just have to hit your targets. So truly, I think that the retail market is looking pretty healthy for a summertime, but I think that was only held up by AI because people were making a lot of profits in AI and some Bitcoin miners. 
Um, can, we now, just quickly, can we just quickly look at Bitcoin again? Because it's back under 30,000. And I just want to explain yes. something that happens in the market. And I want people to really understand this. Yes. Every thousand dollars, there's a wall of selling. And every time we get to another thousand, that is the sell zone. And I've seen it when it was at 25, it struggled getting above 25. When it got to 26, struggled getting above 26. And then it would get above 26 and then go back under 26. Because what that is, it's the, it's the institutionals that have limit orders sitting there selling at every thousand. Exactly. So at every single thousand, even if it rips through, a lot of times you'll see it drop back down. Bitcoin got to 30,700 and it dropped back down under 30. Why? Right. There's a bunch of selling happening at 30,000. That's right. Once it gets past that selling and all that selling is exhausted, then it could really run up to 31. And mm -hmm. then at 31 is where they'll get another bunch of selling. And then once that wall of selling gets exhausted, as long as the momentum continues, then it'll rip through 31. So it's very vital to be watching these numbers. And if it can stay above 30, what will happen is the wall of selling will eventually get exhausted and then it'll move up to 31. This has been a trend I've been watching literally every single day. And Bitcoin's been going up like one or 2,000 a day and it gets the most resistance at every single thousand. So as an investor, you need to know that. You need to know that there's resistance at every thousand so you can make a smart investing decision. Like if you want to sell, for example, it seems as though for every thousand, that's where people are selling their crypto. Right. They're selling in round numbers. Oh, I'm going to buy at 15, sell at 30. I'm going to buy at 20, sell at 27. I'm going to buy at 20, sell at 28. I'm going to buy at 20, sell at 29. Those are institutions. Those are day traders. Those are uh, high net worth investors. They're trading in round numbers with Bitcoin. That's why you see, look, it's back under 30. Then it goes above 30. Then it goes back under 30. It's Definitely. a war between buying and selling. But what makes Bitcoin so special and the reason why I hold it and I believe in it, I know you hold it and you believe in it. Mm -hmm. And I know you're even selling property with investors that are buying properties with Bitcoin Absolutely. now. And investors now, if you want, you guys can buy properties in Mexico with Bitcoin through Amanda. It's wild what she's doing. Um, it's it's Those investors are coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, I'm ready to buy now because the price of Bitcoin is back to 30. Exactly. So it's like this, there's all these numbers that 30 doesn't seem too cheap for people to part with their Bitcoin, <laughs> but they didn't want to part with it at 15. Nobody wanted to go and buy real estate with their Bitcoin when it was at 15 because it was too low. But Absolutely, now but they're back, sure knocking on the door now. <laughs> yeah, but now that it's getting back to 30, people are like, okay, now I'm more willing because maybe they bought it at 20. That's right. When it gets yeah, to 40, even more people are going to be willing to part with their Bitcoin and buy real estate because it's going to be, you know, probably higher than where they bought it. When it gets to 50 or 60, everyone's going to be looking to invest with their Bitcoin because they know they're back to all time highs and mm -hmm. they're thinking, hey, this might be a good time to use my Bitcoin to buy real estate. Exactly. This is the way investors think. Amanda's in that world. She's literally selling real estate in Mexico with Bitcoin maxis that want to own Bitcoin properties, properties that you can purchase with Bitcoin. This is a thing now, guys, and it's only going to get bigger. And Amanda is living proof of it, literally selling, she sold another property today, selling properties in Mexico with Bitcoin maxis that are, want to buy properties with their Bitcoin. That's right. And it's parking an appreciative asset in an appreciating asset. Because yes, here we actually have appreciating asset real estate. I know North America's topped out, but we have not. And I'm the same way. Like if I'm going to part with my Bitcoin, I got to get something special. That's right. And real estate is that thing. Because with real estate, you can sell your real estate. You can rent your real estate. There's so many things you can do with real estate. So I like real estate too. Now, I'm not going to say I like it as much as Bitcoin. But if I can convert my Bitcoin into anything, real estate has to be one of the best options because it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Everybody needs shelter. Everybody wants a home. Your biggest purchase in your life is a home. So at least if I'm going to convert my Bitcoin into something, at least it's going to give me a home. That's, right. That's why I think it's a great idea to be in the Bitcoin real estate business because I see a day in the future where every single transaction will happen with Bitcoin. 
Oh, I hope so. That's how I think the world needs to work, but we're getting closer. Even the US is starting to see the light, you know? It's, uh, these days are coming and there's a lot of people in the world that are focused on making that happen. So I think next week, we're gonna actually do a whole show about real estate and get into it. And I think it's pretty exciting. But we yeah. have to talk about oil. Look at us sitting at 72.56. Oil has been one of the worst performers this year. And I think it's going to get worse. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I do. Um, but not a financial advisor. However, I think it's going to get pretty volatile over the next couple months. Because if a recession comes, let's just say. Recession? You mean the recession that everybody predicted this year and it's been the complete opposite? Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> the recession yeah, yeah, that everybody that predicted? That hasn't happened. That exact same one. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing, if Powell is going to do these rate hikes, it's not going to be a recession so much as we're thinking a recession. I'm thinking a recession in North American real estate, Canada and US. That is the next market that we have yet to correct. And we can't deny that every single market has corrected and the North American real estate market has not. Commercial real estate is defaulting at huge levels. So I don't think this is going to be a recession on a stock level. I think this is going to cause a recession on the banks. And like we've been calling shorts on the banks since April and we've been dumb, right? March, actually. Um, and I think it's going to be the banks. I think it's going to be the REITs, like the real estate investment trust, these large multi-commercial properties, um, these kinds of things. Supply and demand. So now we saw FedEx reported. And they missed earnings. Did you see that? Yeah. And uh, they dropped. I mean, FedEx has been struggling for a while, actually. So has UPS, too. Yeah, they really have. And those are the kinds of things. So historically, if there is, if inflation comes up and there's less demand, oil prices could absolutely come down some more. So I think we're still going to see some volatility here. I expected that we'd be higher. I thought we'd be at close to 80 right now. With, this, with the supply being tightened, I thought that this would have popped by now, but it's not. And every time Powell talks about another hike, it comes down a little further. The only time it didn't is right here where we've been completely flat for a month. I expected this to spike when Powell paused, but it didn't, it sat flat. So that worries me. So, then we have something like COMT that we're both invested in. You're invested a heap of a lot more than I am, but I'm still invested in it. It looks like it's climbing, but I'm not sure if that's going to last. So personally, I would want to target around 28 for now, unless we see oil do something spectacular. Yeah, because at 28, that's with the oil price at around $80. Exactly. So most people are expecting oil to bounce between 85 and 65 this year. And that's kind of what it's been doing. And after being the greatest trade of the year last year, all the oil and gas stocks did great. Oil was an amazing trade last year while everything went down. This year, it's been the opposite. Yes. A lot of tech stocks are doing well. Oil has suffered. And I just think that investors that are investing in oil maybe have pulled out that money and they're putting it somewhere else like AI or tech stocks. That's right. And you know, it's funny that you say that. Do you remember this start of the last bull market that we had? What happened? Oil went to zero. Yeah. That's NASDAQ right. busted new all-time highs. Yep. Because <laughs> history repeats itself. I'm not saying oil is going to zero. That was, you know, that could have been a big old pandemic thing. But I'm saying is these kinds of patterns are repeating. However, we have some big opportunities because one thing that's happened recently is we have proof of what recessions have been called for a year, yet we've been making money. If anyone's been following us or watching us, we've been making money. Well, everyone's sitting on the sidelines licking their wounds from before, we've been making money. It's time to start looking at exactly what's happening on these little pullbacks and where we can catch it. Well, I mean, I've had an amazing year. I've made money on yeah. Tesla, Apple, Google, Amazon, Shopify, 
And I'm up huge on my Bitcoin, my Ethereum, that. and all my Bitcoin and Ethereum investments. So uh, SoFi has been doing really well. BTBT has been doing really well. Those we got SoFi miners. in here because we're at a target level again. So That's literally good. every single thing that I invested in, and I made videos, and I made this public, and mm -hmm. I told you guys what I thought was amazing buying opportunities in 2022 were 100% correct. And all of those picks have gone up. Yeah. Every That's one good. of them. And there's a lot of life left in them, but what are they also? They're NASDAQ picks. Those are the things that hold the NASDAQ. And when times like this happen, it's the tech and the innovation that get going. Remember, this is when it was this kind of a market when you need innovation that people like Kathy Wood became a god. Yes, a goddess. <laughs> so I got a few small caps in here that I think are worthy to talk about. Um, of course, there's volatility, c'est la vie, but this is one that you just introduced to us. So I kind of want to hear a little bit more about it. Um, yeah, this is uh, Atha Energy Corp, uh, mm -hmm. symbol in Canada, S-A-S-K, symbol in America, S-A-S-K-F. It's another one of those companies that we love to bring exposure to, a company that's undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. It's a uranium explorer. So exploring for uranium, uranium energy, and I just feel like we need more uranium and we need it for a lot of different things like creating plants for electric vehicles. So wow. I think it's a company that everyone needs to put on their radar. You can see they're up 8% today. Not bad. Nice. We just put out our video and they're having a nice spike on the day up 8%. So really good to see that. And tight share structure, strong management team, quality company, quality assets, professional, and uh, just quality company. These are the types of companies you want to, you know, if you want to get into small caps, you want to own quality small cap companies. This is one of those quality small cap companies that I think everyone needs to be aware of. And as well as the catalyst, because remember, this is, we have a presidential election coming up in August and something like the two main things that are going to be on all these elections is number one, Bitcoin, and number two, and I got this now, I know how to say it, electrification of vehicles. Because the talk of the world is climate change. And the only way that they know how to do that is to electrify all the vehicles. And these are catalysts for things like this. Word up on that. And that's why MBM comes in. So I just want to tell you guys, I took profit on MBM, but I will absolutely be getting back in when it's time. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Neo Battery Materials has been an absolute screamer. I think when we started talking about them, they were at like 16 cents or something. Yeah. And they've gone all the way from 16 cents to this week, they hit 47. So okay. it's up about 200%. It's done extremely well. And this is a company that's creating super batteries, super batteries that have the ability to have super fast charging. And I believe with the electrification of electric vehicles, this is going to be the type of company that's going to be in high demand. Mm -hmm. And they are, they've been doing extremely well. This to me is just a pullback. Uh, maybe it's a funder selling some stock at a higher price uh, to raise some capital. People and take for profit. investors, for investors, this is a great time. If you wanted to get in, you didn't want to pay 47 cents. Well, now it's at 37. So that's it becomes it. a little bit more, you know, it becomes a little yeah. bit of a better buy for an investor to guide it, buy it on a dip. This is what I talk about consistently. As an investor, you're looking for opportunities in the market. When okay. good quality companies go down, that's a buying opportunity. When good quality companies are up and you're in profit, that's a selling opportunity. If you don't take the buy when it's down or you're not taking the sell when it's up, you're not really exercising your opportunity as a trader. That's right. As a trader, you want to buy low, sell high. And when you, get learn when you learn to do that and eliminate the emotion, you can become a very profitable trader. But most mm -hmm. traders that I talk to are very, very, um, they're emotional. They get too emotional about what they invest in. They start loving what they invest in so much that they never want to sell. And then what happens is when they're up, they won't sell. Then when they're down, they're stressing out. It's a very hard way to trade. Yes. And you, what you have to, to do is go completely against your emotion. Set your target. Like what I do is I'll set a target and I will put in an order. I don't put in the order days before. I put in a good to cancel order based on my target if I want that company. And then as soon as I'm in it, I put in my target sell. That way, whatever happens, I don't give a damn because it just happens. If you have a hard time controlling your emotions, that's a nice way to do it. 
Um, and if you're worried about something going down, set yourself a stop loss. That way you're not looking at it going, oh, it's down 10%. Maybe it'll come up now. Oh no, now it's down 14%. Maybe it'll come up now. Set yourself a stop loss. Stop yourself from feeling your emotions because emotions are natural. What you need to do is learn how you deal with them. So this is it. MBM has been a winner and I think it's going to continue to be a winner. I love this stock and it's a company that's been doing so many amazing things when a lot of companies haven't. So you have to pick a winner, check what they're doing. And if you agree with it, set your target. On people that, there's a lot of people who just made 200%. Now we just showed that example. If you think that people aren't gonna take profits, then you're the stupid one. I'm not trying to be like offensive, but it's true. Can we see the volume? They must have a lot of volume today. I'd like to see um, the volume. I don't because think with I a 20% drop, here. you have to just pull it down. Uh, there you go. Yeah, wow. see the volume? So yeah. that's much more than their average daily volume. So what that is, is I would suggest, I'm assuming that that's somebody that's a funder that's taking some, you know, selling a position. I mean, right. do the math, right? A million shares at, and I'm sure there's a, some volume in America too, a million shares at 40 cents is $400,000. Right. So if you're the company and you need to raise some capital, you sell a little bit of stock, that's probably what's happening there. Now, I don't know for sure, uh, but it seems like it's a lot of volume and it's on the downside. So that seems like, I doubt there's too many retail investors that are holding 400 grand worth of the stock. Right. right. But an institution or, you know, someone that's an insider, a large block holder, or maybe a long-term shareholder that's hold a large position, they might be liquidating, liquidating a position. And that's mm -hmm. probably what's happening because the stock has done so well that they're taking advantage of the liquidity as they should. And that's why you need to understand in the market when something goes up so much that it's too good to be true, that's usually the sign to sell. Yes. Because if you're not going to sell, somebody else is. That's right. And that's that's right. the game. That's the game. Understanding, hey, man, I'm up so much on this stock. Maybe I should sell. I'm up so much on this crypto. Maybe I should sell. Because if I'm thinking about selling, probably everybody else is too. And exactly. then what happens is when they see the selling come, what they do is they immediately sell it as well. Because they want to sell before it goes even lower. That's so it. Then and it creates the like a. Then it creates like um, like a like like, what's the word? It, it creates kind of like a storm, yes. where a selling storm where everyone's just kind of selling in a panic. That's it. And 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 then before you know it, the stock goes down nineteen percent, like we've seen with NBM today. Today. Right, but and like it could I said, absolutely I, go down more. But then there's going to be people like us who hit their targets and get back in, and then it's gonna come up without you. Yeah, so I know you've been trading NBM a lot, right? right? You've just been buying low, selling high, buying low, selling high. Exactly. Are you in NBM now? Um, no, I sold it. Okay, there you go. So you sold yeah. it yourself. So you, so you saw NBM the target, the you saw the profit, you said, you know yeah. what, let me take the profit, and you probably yeah. sold it even before today. So you yeah. sold, it sold it in the Friday. green, as opposed, you sold it Friday? Yeah. Yeah, so you sold it in the green, as yes. opposed to waiting for it to drop, which is smart. That's the way to sell. Buy and the I'm red, get back sell in. the green. I'm gonna, I got in at 23. I'm going to get back in somewhere between 20, 23 and 27, looks like could happen. So I haven't decided really where in there, but I'm definitely going to get back in. Um, Very nice. Because I like them. Now, this is one that I missed the big hype on it, but I'm actually looking for a space for it to slow down because I like this company. Yeah, I Hypercharge, another company that we've talked about, a sponsored client. They have charging stations all across Canada. And I just think that that's a business that is going to be in huge need as electrification of electric vehicles gets bigger and more popular, more interesting and more mandated by governments. I think that's you're going to see companies like this really do well. It had a massive pop um, and, and it's come back down. So uh, we talked about it. It had that massive pop. I hope you sold and took profit. Now it's back down. So as an investor, if you didn't get in the first time and you like the company, this might be the time to start thinking about getting in yourself. That's right. Because we're starting to see a flat line develop and I'm starting to see more green than I'm seeing red. You notice this? Yeah. People are starting to nibble at it. Exactly. And if you nibble at this at 75 cents, then really when you hit 122, hey, that's a pretty nice profit. And that's what happened last time. 
So yep. if we can see some green come in here and some volume return, that's going to be quite sexy. So we're both bottom up traders and this is how it's done. Um, this is a new one that you brought out and it had a really nice week because we actually talked about this last week um, and they did really well. Then they pulled back. Um, so what would be your target on this? I just, I mean, I don't really have a target. You can see the high is two bucks. So I think that, you know, that's probably where it could go. But I really believe that it's another lithium play and yes. there's a shortage of lithium. Yes. And I think lithium miners are poised to break out huge. Yes, so, I agree with you. And it's done well. It's already broken out. So we got into this after it was already up 500%. So okay. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to buy it at these levels. I think you need to make your own decisions, your own, do your own due diligence on it. But it's a quality company. It's got a really tight float. I think something crazy like 13 million shares. Mm -hmm. I love tight floaters. It's a tight float, strong management team, quality assets, doing mining and exploration for lithium in Argentina, which is a high enriched. Oh, yeah, high area. producing. And Chile in Argentina, Quebec. I think are the top, aren't they? Quebec and, and Argentina. So two of the best areas in the world for mining for lithium. And these guys are there and they're also acquiring assets. So they're a, you know, they're a company that does investing into properties as well as exploring into properties. And I think it's one to watch with a very tight float. So with a tight float means there isn't a lot of shares out there. There isn't a ton of selling. There isn't a ton of liquidations happening. So I think the upside is tremendous. I think it's a company everyone should be aware of. Speaking of upside, tremendous props to everybody who just got paid on SoFi. Yep, so, I'm a holder of SoFi, full disclosure. I have over a thousand shares of SoFi myself. Yes. And um, and I like SoFi and I think that the, you know, it's got huge potential, like you can see with your charts there. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, for me, if I could sell it at like, like you got that mark, like $18 to $24, mm -hmm. that would be a huge home run for me. Absolutely. And you know what? There's things that we talk about, about catalysts, catalysts for a stock. Now, so far, I've been saying I'd short the banks. If I was a shorter, which I'm not, I'd be shorting banks. However, so far has a little bit difference as in this. So far is holding a lot of student loan debt. There was a point in time where they were talking about student debt being forgiven and that's what drove SoFi down. Do you recall this? Yes, I do. Right. So as soon as they were saying that, everybody's like, why am I going to hold this stock if they're not going to have their main income anymore? But guess what? Those days are over. <laughs> now it's a matter of when will they be paying back and how long for? And I just recently learned that in the US, if you don't pay your student back under this new bill, you don't pay your loan back, it'll actually be transferred to your inheritance. Like you don't, it won't even be dead when you're dead. Wow. So like this is staying longer than a diamond. Okay? They're, going after, they're going after your kids. That's right. Wow. So considering that SoFi's main income source, I think that is juicy AF. So yes, we're seeing a pullback, but why are we seeing a pullback? Because it went up huge. It went up huge. It went up 130. Well, no, there's another reason why they're having a pullback because uh, I don't know which bank it was, but a large bank came out and, and reduced their price target. Right, which is so dumb. Yeah, so they had like a $14 price target and they started to shoot. They got to 10 bucks. And then another bank, who knows, maybe they're short on it, uh, yeah. came out and lowered their price target to like nine or ten dollars and then that immediately sold it off and that was the reason why they lost all that momentum because they've been on absolute fire until yeah. they got that one uh you know price reduction and investors have a short memory <laughs> of course i mean we've seen that with crypto and like within a week how exactly. quickly things can change right bitcoin yes. went from being bearish to bullish within a week Mm -hmm. We went from a bear market to a bull market in a week in crypto. That's right. That's right. So when we're talking about gas prices, you were telling me that gas prices in Canada were ridiculous. What, what is it now? In Vancouver specifically is the highest in the country. It's over $2 a liter. That is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. So in the last year, Uber is up 122%. How's that for a recession? <laughs> Man, I've been talking about Uber for so long. I love them. That's right. I, I like using them. 
Um, I like Uber Eats. I like everything they're doing. I think they're a really smart tech company. As do I. And I think they've positioned themselves in a time of gorgeousness. And this is why I'm saying this. Now, we talked about Uber just two weeks ago. It hasn't stopped because this is when we talked about it as soon as they tested Trendline. So do you remember we brought this out? So it was May 1st. We brought this out and said Uber's testing Trendline and it was looking green. What you want to do is pop in when you test Trendline because if you're not in already, you want to get in at your biggest discounted price. That happens. I think a discount is going to come again. But one thing to know when a rate hike comes, now two more rate hikes before Christmas are expected, before the new year. Do you think people are going out to buy a new car? No. When gas prices, you can't afford it, are you going to be driving all over the town? No. You're going to be calling an Uber or Lyft. And they're going to be making a heap of money. So I think if you don't catch a trend line on this, we have already been over the Mo zone. And I'm just going to zoom out so you can see how beautiful this is. Uber is now above the breakthrough support that it fell out of when all the bear market started. So word up on that, it's looking gorgeous. I, I love lift, Uber. I think. Great to see them breaking out. It it's is. Been long, it's been a long time coming. But look who hasn't broke out yet. Speaking of arbitrage, Lyft went through some dramas, but they're still, they've, re, um, what do you call it, restructured. They've done a bunch of restructuring, and I think it's time to start paying attention to Lyft. And it looks like I'm not the only one that says that, because it looks like we're starting to have more green than red, and I think people are slowly starting to come on. So do your own DD, but if you're looking for an arbitrage opportunity, this could be it. Alibaba. I don't love Lyft, but it's definitely at a good price. But I don't exactly. love it. Now, Alibaba fell. Do you remember when Alibaba fell? Oh, yeah. Because when all the China drama. Which all is the China stocks million. struggled. And, exactly. And, uh, and, and it became a buying CEO opportunity. And hiding. Yep. Well, he's actually stepped down. As of yesterday, the CEO of Alibaba stepped down and he's handed um. it over. That's right. Uh, okay. So my very first entry on Alibaba, and this was like, I think 2018, was here at 127. And I did well. And now here we are at $86. And they're doing things that are making people happy. And this has been a one-year bottom. So through all the other dramas that have happened, it's held these levels. So I think if there's ever a time, if you're into that stuff, just telling you. I mean, I could see it easily going from like 80 to 120 and you can make 50% on Baba. That's right. Yeah, I think that's it's a right. good trade. I think I like that trade idea. <laughs> yeah, I do as well. And that's why I had to bring it up. <clears throat> Square, no matter how you cut it, this seems to be the bottom, no matter how you cut it. Um, I own Square. Um, and I'm up like 2%, so not enough to write home about. But nevertheless, I'm super stoked about this trade. But one thing I wanted to say is, just to get back to support levels, and now when crypto runs, and I'm talking Bitcoin and crypto, when they run, so to Square. When you want to talk about arbitrage opportunities, it hasn't run yet. Now we're going to see Bitcoin miners pulling back very soon. I would keep your eyes peeled on this. Also, Western Union, we talked about Western Union not long ago. Western Union came up quite nicely from when we talked about it. Um, it spiked from the bottom where we called it and it went up about 20, 22%. It seems to be stabilizing at this levels, but one thing I wanted to say is, Right. There is a lot of Western Union's money goes to remittances in Mexico. Western Union takes off a very big percent of what the receiver receives, like a good size percent. The peso is higher than it's been in seven and a half years. So if you don't think that that's going to show up on their balance sheet, another thing coming. Now, we started talking about this. Fidelity. When we're talking about banks going to crap, if Fidelity manages, now this is Fidelity Group, 
FNF. I think a lot of banks are going to crap, but here's the thing. Fidelity pays a 5.2% dividend. Wow, I like that. Right. And they're the only proper bank that custodies its own Bitcoin and other cryptos, apparently. Um, so they're in self-custody. They do not need to outsource their custody, nor do they even want to. If they acquire Grayscale, and if their $18 trillion spot ETF gets approved, I actually think that this is a good opportunity. What okay. do you think? I think it's a great idea. I didn't even think about buying Fidelity and they're only at $34, which means I think there's some huge opportunity. See, now I'm thinking you just triggered something in my brain that all the banks have sucked for like a year after having a monster year last year. So banks have sucked, oil and gas has sucked. Last year, banks did great, oil and gas did great. So if I'm a bank and I'm sucking, why not hitch my wagon to Bitcoin and Boom. ride the hype of some of the Bitcoin momentum. This is exactly what Michael Saylor told them all to do. Michael Saylor made it very clear that the reason why he bought Bitcoin through MicroStrategy in the first place was to hedge his shitty other investments. <laughs> and he's been teaching this. If you want to hedge all these other bonds and everything else that you're in that's taking you down, you need to hedge it with Bitcoin. Right? Yeah. Even Goldman Sachs agreed that Bitcoin was their top performing investment in the year. So here's Fidelity manning up to take a piece of the pie. And it looks to me like they're the only bank that's manning up to take a piece of the pie. So I actually think it's looking pretty sexy. That's a good idea. I wrote that down. And guys, I always write down the deals that I haven't heard of or new deals. And I'm always adding to my watch list. I'm always adding to my radar and I'm trying to watch the entire market and I'm looking for opportunities in the market. Great companies when they're down, great assets when they're down. I'm looking to sell when they're up. I'm looking at the entire market sentiment. I think as an investor, the longer you get in the market and the more you start to understand what's happening in the market, the better you're going to get at trading. And then before you know it, it just becomes easier. Everything starts to become easier because you start to see things before they happen and it's becoming, like I said, almost robotic and learning how to trade without any emotion is something that comes with time. But if you get to that point, like Warren Buffett is, it can become so easy for you mm -hmm. and you can make so much money because you're not trading with emotion. It's not about, I hope this will go there. It's more about, okay, this is up now. Let me take my profits. This is down now. Great company. Let me buy while it's down. Oh, it's up again. Let me sell it today. And Trading just becomes fun right. when you're not investing all your money in penny stocks and all your money into meme coins. You need to own big companies if you want to be a right long-term investor. If you want to be a long-term investor that invests for a long time, not just a good time, you need to own some Bitcoin. You need right. to own some Apple. You need to own some Tesla. You need to own some of the biggest companies in the world or you're always going to put your portfolio at risk. Oh. Yeah, we like this forever. We like to do this. If you don't hedge, you're going to be like this. And this is the difference. So I said I was removing Grayscale from my watch list, and I did. But when I saw Grayscale scream over the last two days on the talk of BlackRock taking on the CTF, and possibly Fidelity acquiring Grayscale, I have to say that when this returns to bottom, I'm going to be looking at it very closely again. However, just like the beginning of our very last bull market, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, you see this right here? Yep. This was the beginning of our last bull market. It came all the way to here where we are today and it pulled right back to bottom. So if you don't see that, you're blind. There's 250 in that, okay? So and we've hit, and we just hit a 52 week high in grayscale today. That's right. So if you don't think this is gonna pull back, you need to look at history. I think it's gonna pull back. We have to wait for the next catalyst. Now, one more thing, I know we're short on time, but here's what the main event I wanted to say. When 
Now here's Coinbase. You remember when Coinbase went all the way to 450 and everybody was aping, we didn't touch it. Yeah. Because we don't believe in buying hyped up IPOs. However, when it was like the day after or within a couple days, Kathy Wood, so SEC said we're suing Coinbase, right? Yep. And then Kathy Wood went and bought a whole heap of it. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Buying the dip. Well, <laughs> I think she just absolutely knew that BlackRock's ETF might be going in there real quickly, right? I think Kathy Wood dry, you know, kind of beats to her own drum. She doesn't really care about what other people think. And she doesn't That's really it. care about uh, lawsuits. She doesn't care about any of those things. She cares about fundamentals and technicals and analysis. And she believes that Coinbase is undervalued. She believed the same thing with Tesla. She's been right about Tesla. Uh, she hasn't been right about every stock, but some of the stocks that she's talked about have now come back and had really good years so far. Exactly. So I think this is one to keep your eyes peeled on because if the day that BlackRock takes approval, this baby is going to be a screamer. So know that so far they are delisting everything that they were told to delist. So they've been behaving on an SEC level. They're caving a bit, but that's what we need them to do. You know, what's it funny is I've been in Coinbase. I was at Coinbase in 2017. It was the first exchange I ever invested in. And do you know that in 2017, they only had three coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Really? Yeah. And they stayed that way for years. I tried to get an account with them, but do you remember I was a Canadian living in Bali and they wouldn't let me do the crossover. So I never used them. But it's um, funny because they went from only wanting those three coins, which probably would have kept them compliant now yeah. to getting involved in all these garbage coins. That's right. And that's why they're not compliant is because they've got too many of these, like you said, small cap, micro yeah. cap coins that are just garbage coins that yeah. are securities deemed by the sec because they have no businesses right just in but the business of selling coins their business is a business of selling coins that's their business so when yeah. says, someone says what is a security a security is a coin whose only objective is to sell more coins yes there is no business there is no underlying business in those coins there is no money behind those coins there's no assets behind those coins there's no technology behind those coins the only technology they have is the coin itself. And the only business they have is the business of selling the coin. Exactly. That's the difference. So I think that they could be doing a major restructure and going back to the old ways. And if they do, it's in their best interest to do that. So if they do, that could work out really good. Um, yeah. I know we're over time, um, but the rest is pretty much repetitive. But here's what I wanted to say. I watched everybody ape in ape in to the miners this morning and i said be careful because chasing the green chasing the green they were chasing the green chasing the green totally had eight hit a 10 percent <laughs> alert within like five minutes of market open and i was like what and then it hit 12 and then it struggled and then it was yeah. like 10 11 9 <laughs> 10 9 8 <laughs> and then here we are at seven um, so these things are happening. It's getting tired. Guys, this is not a sustainable run. This is a hype run. All you have to do is set your freaking targets. It's not hard. So a target would just be before we were, I mean, where we were before the hype. And I think every Bitcoin miner is going to see that same thing. This was not a sustainable run. This was a hype run. Get paid, put it in your pocket and double it up on the next run up. So set your targets. If you're hyping, you're probably going to be bag holding for a little bit of time because we need catalysts on this, right? Yep. So that was pretty much all I wanted to say about that. And the miners I'm talking about is Hot, Bit Farms. Let's just quickly go through them all though. We can? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. I'm okay. I'm okay with time. So let's just okay, quickly good. go through them all because it's I a good we list. It's a good list and they're all moving today. So I want you to talk about it. Damn right. So we just saw two big, big, big days, right? Yeah. So we saw about 45% in total on BitFarms. Yep. Hallelujah. Full disclosure, I, I do own BitFarms. I sold a little this morning. Not all of it, but I had to put some in my pocket. So 
I had sold a bunch of my BTB. I sold all my BTBT and I put it onto BitFarms. Is so BTBT on I your list today? Everything. What's that? Is BTBT on your list today? Yep, it is. It, I don't see them. Oh, snap. Maybe it's not. My bad. Well, it should be because they have been making moves. And moves. Let's just take a look at them because I own them and I'm, I, I have like over a thousand shares of them and I really like them. Well, that's because they've been like, they busted $4. They busted Woo! resistance. That's what I'm Why talking did they about. bust resistance? They look have at that chart, baby. That's a Bitcoin miner, folks. BTBT is a Bitcoin miner. BITF is another Bitcoin miner. So if you actually want to mine Bitcoin, but you don't want to mine Bitcoin, you can just buy the Bitcoin miners. That's what I do. I don't want exactly. a bunch of machines in my house making noise, uh, costing me electricity, dealing with that headache. I don't want to do that. But I can buy the Bitcoin miners that are doing that. And if Bitcoin explodes, then most likely those Bitcoin miners will follow it. And that's exactly what's happening with BTBT and BITF. Exactly. Now, BITF right now, the reason why I targeted it so heavy, BITF, is because they actually sold in May. They sold all of the all of the Bitcoin that they mined in May. They sold it for profit. Great. Because if you remember in May, we had all the Bitcoin ordinals coming and that caused the network to congest and the Bitcoin mining fees were outrageous, which means all these miners were pocketing the cash. Hmm. What made BTBT spike? Profits. They came out with earnings and they were juicy. So then we have Perfect. others like BITF, like Hyatt. They haven't busted out their earnings yet, but when they do, buckle up. So BITF, they actually made a, over 11 million off what they sold in May and they put it towards nice. their debt. Nice. Clean they up did. the debt, clean up the balance sheet. That's the right way to do it. That's right. And then they started looking at HUD 8. Their balance sheet is looking tight. They've been paying off a lot of bills. Nice. Which is why they're looking just about the same sexy level. They're almost at the same sexy levels as BTBT. So these guys go, they all run in a cycle together, right? Yeah. I did sell my BTBT too soon though. It's hurting me. Like seeing these go up the last couple of days, I was like, ah. But <laughs> I could say that about so me. many stocks. <laughs> How about okay. Mara and Riot? Because I love those two. And they just look like they're just poised to explode. Well, Mara just went up like pretty much 30% in a couple of days. There you go. So I was looking to target Mara at 960, I think, was the target to add one. And then boom, it took off. <laughs> wow. Um, but it's pulling back. And it's pulling back because we hit a resistance level and there's not another catalyst to make it bump. There could be a couple more days of retail traders trying to bite that up. Personally, I want to see it fall back to that 10 level. So as long as um, we don't have BlackRock saying, well, guess what? We're accepted within three days. I think we're going to have time to get back to that level. Perfect. Set your target and let it happen. And Riot is looking like a riot. <laughs> so Riot and Mara are two big miners in the United States. That's so if right. you're looking for Bitcoin miners, I really think BITF, BTBT, Riot, and Mara, those four are four really good plays that can make you a lot of money buying exactly. dips and selling rips and literally just using Bitcoin as a, a gauge. If Bitcoin's down, they're probably going to go down. When Bitcoin goes up, they're probably going to scream. You got it. And that's exactly how it goes. So Riot actually doesn't have much of a resistance until it gets to about $14. And the thing is, is that Mara went screaming, but Riot was just kind of creeping. But this is similar to BTBT went screaming, Hot 8 went screaming, and then BITF creeped up and then went screaming. So I think people in institutions, they have their favorites and then they cycle amongst the rest. And that's what I see happening because there's no reason why this was going a little bit slower, except people pick favorites and say la vie. Now, Hive, you will never see me buy Hive again because my story is, and it hurts, I owned Hive at 50 cents, 53 cents actually, because I won't forget this. And I sold it just under a dollar and then it went up so big without me. 
So I just have some personal pain with this one. <laughs> I mean, look However, at that move though. It's, I mean, company. it's gone from what, two bucks to five bucks in a very short period of time this year. So it's already up over what, 150% this exactly. year? Exactly. And it's Amazing. still looking pretty strong. Like the Mozone is already holding above 100. So, mm. you know, just from that bottom to the bottom of the last is a, literally 100%. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. So I need to hundred percent on an I investment in a few months. Pain. Anytime you can make hundred percent on an investment in a few months, it's always great. Exactly. Um, now, what I really wanted to get into, so micro strategy, hola, micro strategy is uh, quite nice. Um, ten percent in the last two days, and for a stock that's at three hundred dollars, hallelujah. Yeah. And that's the largest holder of Bitcoin that is a publicly traded company in the world, correct? Got it. Or does GBD, no, I think GBTC has more. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, GBTC has 635,000. Um, and MicroStrategy has just over 125,000. Yeah, so uh, GBDC is definitely bigger, but these guys are trading at 300 bucks. That's right. Um, and not only that, they're gaining a lot of traction institutionally. So they have a lot of big institutions buying their stock as well because of what they're doing. So they have a price target. Last I looked was just over 400. And I think that that's like really conservative, <laughs> really conservative. So it's looking good and juicy. Will this hold again? Not so sure. I think if you miss this, you're likely going to be able to pick up that $300 level again. I just want to set a reminder for anyone who doesn't remember the last bull market is that I was worried about Galaxy because the lunatic had a lot of Luna. The lunatic. <laughs> he did not, did he not tattoo himself? The lunatic? He did. He tattooed himself saying, I'm a lunatic. And then Luna went bankrupt pretty much. That's right. And I heard that later. he was on um, CNBC and he covered up his lunatic tattoo to talk about Bitcoin. <laughs> oh man, that's rough. I found that kind of amusing. <laughs> it's amusing if, if for everyone except for him and for anyone holding, anyone that was holding Galaxy Digital because they lost a bunch of money because they were holding Luna in Galaxy Digital. That's right. But yeah, they that was, survived. That was pretty crappy too. But, but Galaxy Digital is at a great price now again. This is what I was going to say. Of all the drama that's happened all year, they haven't gone lower. So yeah. they actually haven't even gone as low as their absolute bottom, which everybody else did. So that's kind of an interesting sign to me. I never owned it. But one thing I do remember is when it was all the way up at $46, actually when it was climbing, I remember you saying, I told you guys about this at $8 because that was a pop up. And then it was 11 and then it was 15. And you're like, I told you guys at $8. <laughs> I told you guys at $8. So now we and have it went to 46, 46, 44. Yeah. Yeah. And now is the time because a lot of these coins and a lot of these stocks you're going to see here, I own btcc.b. I own btcx.b. I, I own a lot of those. And I got in when Bitcoin was at 58,000. So I remember like it was yesterday that they were yes. priced at about 10 bucks when Bitcoin was at 58,000. Cause that's what yeah, they came out at. at $9. Yeah. They came out at nine, 10 bucks. And that's yes. when I initially bought it. But while this has been down, I've been buying more and lowering my costs, buying more, lowering my costs, buying more, lowering my costs. Now I own a lot of both and I'm just waiting for the next Bitcoin bull market, which I believe has started. And with Bitcoin going back now, I think to those prices of 58,000, where these opened at, if it can go back to those levels and higher, which I believe it will in the next 12 to 24 months, I think you're going to see this go to, you know, 15 to $20. And then if you own it and you've got lower your average to like five, six, seven bucks, and it goes to 15 to $20, you're going to make a killing on these stocks. Hell yeah, you will. So, I mean, this $13 high here on Galaxy Bitcoin ETF, because Canada was the first to come out with Bitcoin ETFs. That's it's right. A crappy country, but at least we have Bitcoin ETFs. So truly, this was representing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is representing the 65k Bitcoin. So yep. clearly, 
We're not so far away from that. Now remember, Bitcoin is up 100% this year. We only need another hundy to hit all-time highs again. That's right. Just and it will. Perspective. And if you're a Bitcoin maxi or if you're someone that believes in Bitcoin like I do, and full disclosure, I own Bitcoin. I own a lot of these assets. You, you believe Bitcoin's going back to all-time highs because it's that's straight. all it's ever done. That's Historically, right. Bitcoin always breaks its all-time highs every few years. And it's, it's a, a baby. Pattern. It's, it's only a 12 pattern. years old. And why does it break its all-time highs every few years? Because what is a Bitcoin having? A Bitcoin having means that the difficulty for mining Bitcoin for miners doubles every four years. So every four years, it gets more difficult to mine Bitcoin. So in order for a Bitcoin miner to be profitable, the price has to go up. If the price doesn't go up, it doesn't become profitable for a Bitcoin miner to mine Bitcoin. Thus, the entire infrastructure falls apart. Right, but that's how it's structured. It's mathematical currency. It's structured for the price to go up so the miners are profitable. Otherwise, people wouldn't mine it. There'd be no money in it. There'd be no business for them to generate income. That's right. That's why the price is generating income. Don't even kid yourself. That's why the price always goes up during a Bitcoin halving because it has to for the business to sustain itself. Or those miners will find another business to generate revenue. Exactly, exactly. And that's where it comes in. Um, we talked about B-Web last week, and I just yep. wanted to say it hasn't stopped. Wow, look at that, eh? This Good is call. the big wise trust ETF. Holy snap, right? Yeah. So it's not stopping. So props Beautiful. to anybody that owns that. I don't, sadly. <laughs> um, now, Block has interested me, and they're growing some decent momentum. Um, and this is an ETF as well. So if you don't know about Block, take a look. I think it's interesting. Now, these, I just want to give you a quick tip off. I just have a couple more, and this is why. Earnings season. Earnings are coming. Now, last week, we talked about all the fast food companies, right? Yep. Do you remember I brought fat, which has that nice fat dividend? Yes. How juicy has our week been? Huge week. Great call on that. And a 7.5% dividend on fat, F-A-T. Now, what could be a catalyst for more fat? Because uh, not that any of us want more fat, but if you want some fat, this is where to get it. So I see a nice uptrend on here. However, we're at a resistance area, right? Yep. Yep. In order to bust a resistance, you need a catalyst. What could be a catalyst? Darned in. We're going to have revenues posted on this this week. I think tomorrow, actually. Darned in restaurants. They have like a heap of chain restaurants that everybody eats at in the U.S. under their portfolio. And they're still busting all-time highs. This is all-time highs. If they post big revenue... I think we're going to see that light up this market in ways that is pretty spectacular. Like look at Domino's right now. Yeah, Domino's has been doing really well too. Right. We called Domino's last week. It had a beautiful week. Um, And I think it could bust this resistance if we see a big revenue on Darden restaurants because that's just going to prove. So if you want to see all the ones that we talked about, just go look at our live from last week. Just to pay attention, these are going to be earnings for this week that I think we need to keep our eyes peeled on. Blackberry is posting earnings. I no longer own my Blackberry, but I was actually looking to have a target on it. Um, so I sold it and I was thinking that that 350 was a nice level. Maybe we could get it. But if they post juicy earnings, just saying. Walgreens is reporting earnings this week. And considering we just finished a flu season, that could bring Walgreens up. Um, I own Walgreens. I'm down on Walgreens, but I've been collecting a dividend, so it's not so painful because I'm not down that much. So truly, I think when it comes to these kinds of stocks like pharmacies and whatnot, you have all these flu season things that are just over, and that is going to post on those earnings. So watch out for that. And if that lights up, that's going to be Johnson & Johnson lighting up and all the other pharmas. General Mills is posting earnings. This is like all the processed food. And since you all have no farmland, that could be really juicy, right? Yeah, GIS, General Mills. Mills. Cereals and processed stuff. 
And it has a dividend, 2.68%. That's right. And it's just testing trend line. So last earnings and the earnings before posted beautifully, because as you know, inflation has hit the grocery stores in record levels. And grocery stores have actually inflated their prices more than they needed to. Because we've seen the grocery chains making big bucks. Yep. So that's why I think this is a good op. Keep your eyes peeled. Micron's posting earnings this week. Now, when it comes to chips and AI and all that good stuff, I think we really need to pay attention to Micron. So again, they had a pullback and they're really just testing trend line. <clears throat> so if they post nice earnings and this is over the week, this could be a really nice pop. Definitely. And then, da -da -da, Nike. Nike's posting earnings, I think the 29th. It was in my, it just popped in my calendar. I think it's the 29th. Last earnings on Nike did this. Boom. Yeah. So if you don't see this and know that we stopped at a higher low, then there's something wrong with your eyeballs. <laughs> so I wouldn't doubt if we can at least hit there, which should be a nice 25% at minimum. And if we follow the same trend on earnings, we could actually see it spike before. But to me, just a 25% on $109 stock is pretty happy. Pretty juicy. And one more. MKC, McCormick Company, again, is a processed food company. And since everybody's buying processed foods at crazy inflated levels, I think this is a good one as well. Little so dividend 1.68% there for MKC. Yeah, MKC. Can, so, we just, can you just look at one stock real quickly before yeah. we take it back? Yeah. Can you look at Pfizer for a second? Yes, I can. I know we disagree on this, but I just think that I hate them for so many reasons. I just think that the stock is going to go higher. I hate them. Not just economically, though, not just because of the stock, just because of what they did to everybody in the world. I know, but just look at the chart from like a chart perspective. Technically, they look like they're finding a bottom. Yes, but when you think about extraneous factors, I'm not so sure that they're going to have enough to pop them up. I just think the healthcare stocks have really struggled this year. Uh, I think that sets up for buying opportunities, like how last year tech stocks struggled, that created buying opportunities. This year, all the tech stocks exploded. Last year, all the oil and gas stocks exploded. This year, all the oil and gas stocks are going down because oil is going down. I just feel like these are patterns. And it just, to me, feels like Pfizer is in a decent buy zone based on the chart. Now, fundamentally, yes, they're not making as much money because they're not selling as many vaccines. But what happens is after a few quarters of them getting used to not making that vaccine money, they're going to have to start generating income elsewhere. And I believe once they figure out how to generate income elsewhere and they start beefing up their revenues again, I believe this is a company that's going to do well because it's one of those too rich to fail type companies, in my opinion. They got a lot of money. Know, to, to me, they were so dead until they made a pandemic. And that this yeah, and they they profited greatly. They profited greatly and put a ton of money in the bank. Right, but we don't pandemic. have a pandemic anymore. No, Not I know, yet. but they use that money to go and acquire businesses that okay. is going to generate them billions of dollars. And they're one pandemic away from exploding again. And we it's all know. Story, and apparently they're working on that. So. That's what I mean. Like if another pandemic comes, who do you think everyone's going to buy? They're going to run to, to Pfizer. By that point, it's probably already back to $45. So that's yeah. what I'm just trying to say. Keep Pfizer on your radar because if there is another pandemic, this will be one of the greatest trades like it was last time during the last pandemic. And I remember buying it in the low 30s and selling it at 60 bucks and doubling my money. And I just feel like it's setting up for that again. Yeah, let's see. Apparently, Bill Gates is working on tuberculosis and malaria. So, you know, if he succeeds. And, he, and Bill this, Gates has already come out and said there will be another pandemic. Right. And now he's studying malaria and tuberculosis in so, China and places. I mean, try to read between the lines. But as an investor, this is another one of those companies that I just feel like is in a decent buy zone that has some really good upside. And a nice dividend over 4%. I can't deny that. I just, I hate them. You know, we're not supposed to trade with emotion. I feel very emotional about Pfizer and it's not the chart that I hate. I just hate them. <laughs> hey, listen, I sold my Pfizer. I made money. The last time I sold it was at 59 bucks. So I see it at $38 and I'm really happy I sold. 
<laughs> I know. I just I can't. <laughs> so, so as an investor, I'm just saying, hey, might be a decent buy here soon. Maybe not today. Maybe. maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not this year. Maybe next year. But if another pandemic comes, I'm telling you, that is the cheapest of all the large cap uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies is Pfizer with a decent dividend of 4%. So it just seems like a decent buy for me. I'll tell you, when the next pandemic arrives, I will give you an I told you so. I promise you. When the next pandemic arrives, we will pull up Pfizer and I will say, I will eat poop and give you an I told you so. I won't actually eat poop, but you know what I'm talking about? I just, uh, I just like, the, you know, they say I like to talk poop. about things before they happen. That's what right. investing is. Anybody but, can chase the stock that's up or anyone can chase Bitcoin at 30,000 now that it's going up. But to be able to buy something at a bottom before it explodes, I take a lot of pride in it. I want to see like more how I called it with Apple last year and Tesla, and Shopify, and Facebook, uh, and Google, and Amazon, and Bitcoin, and Ethereum. I was right on all eight of those picks, eight for eight. I'm telling you, Pfizer is another one of those companies that's too big to fail. At some point, it will find a bottom. I think the bottom is 38. It might go a little lower, but I really believe 38 is like a bottom. It's gone to 40 a few times and it goes back down to 38. So it seems to be finding like a, like a floor at about 36 to 38. I think if you get in at that price, I think you're going to get a chance to make some good money. Because if it goes back to 50, 60 and you get in at 36, 38, you know, that's like a 50 to 80% return on your money while you hold and collect a 4% dividend. Okay. I kind of think that I'm going to be watching. So, you know, the cases of, of COVID started to go up really COVID, after Bill Gates COVID exists? It in does China. COVID still exist? Yeah, it actually does, but nobody really? dies from it. They just don't care. There's this I didn't thing even know COVID was a thing And anymore. they go, oh, I have COVID, but I'm not sick. So there's still tests going around for COVID. We're just, most people don't get sick. That's the thing. However, last time Bill Gates studied um, a bacteria in China, it became a pandemic. So he's there and he's studying tuberculosis. So you don't have to worry about malaria because it won't live up there. We might have to in Mexico, but you know. Wait, when you start seeing cases of tuberculosis rise in China, that's when I'm going to say, okay, let's grab ourselves some Pfizer. All right, all right. Okay, so everybody, I just wanted to let you know, Amanda, can we uh, stop sharing the screen for a second? Yes. We totally say goodbye can. to everyone. Yes. Uh, I just want to let everyone know that Amanda has a business in Mexico and internationally called Bitcasa Homes. She is now selling as a broker properties in Mexico. You can buy them with Bitcoin. You can buy them with fiat. You can buy them with many different options. But she literally has Bitcoin maxis that are buying these properties now in Bitcoin. If you would like to buy a property in Mexico, you can get one in Mexico as well. And the prices are phenomenal. Condos for like 100,000, 150,000 to 200,000 US. I mean, you can't even get a parking spot in Canada for that anymore here in Vancouver. And they're money making condos, they're rental income generating condos. So that's so, where it comes in. So right now, because Bitcoin's on fire, people are willing to buy things with Bitcoin again. So if you're looking for real estate, you can talk to Amanda about that. Talk to me about that. We're going to be working on a lot of different projects together. In the meantime, guys, if you're winning, probably because you're watching, we're bringing the winners. We're bringing the chart analysis. We're bringing Amanda's analysis every single week. Next week, we're going to do a special episode where we're going to talk about buying real estate in Mexico with Bitcoin. So stay tuned to that next week. This week, let's watch this momentum continue in Bitcoin and cryptos and all over the markets. Hopefully you learned something from today's session. Amanda does a great job with the charts. That's Amanda, great. thank you so much once again from Mexico, uh, giving us your chart analysis on all the top stocks, news, and Bitcoin and cryptos for the week. We're all about making money here. So let's talk about a little bit more next week. We're diversifying into real estate. So excited for that. Yeah, super excited. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We're bringing the winners, bringing the chart analysis. CEO interviews, breaking news, and we bring it to you first. Make sure you go and subscribe to Rich TV Live everywhere and Rich TV all over social media. Go and join our website and ecosystem built by investors for investors. You're going to see a section for real estate there where now we're going to be selling real estate in Mexico with Amanda 
Super excited about that. Welcome to the team. I'm excited to have you on the team. It's amazing. We continue to grow and we will always continue to grow. And we're always going to be an innovative company looking for different ways to generate revenue and be involved in the single greatest investment of our lifetimes, Bitcoin. So hopefully you are learning. Hopefully you're winning. Hopefully you're watching. Have yourselves a great day. Have a great week. Amanda, have a great week in Mexico. Well. And thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys soon. Peace.